Josh Heinrichs and my beautiful wife, Katie Heinrichs. That's right. And we are back for episode three. She was the guest last time, and guess what? Now she's the co host. <laughs> That's right. Uh, cool. Because today we have a special guest. That's right. The specialist of guests, our best friend in the whole wide world. Let's introduce him right now. Are you ready, folks? Give it up for Mr. Skillinger! Hey, Skilly! How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, enjoy the cool set here. Man, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Yeah. It looks great. Got I love a picture it. of you, Linda. Linda. Brought out Linda today for the interview. She's actually present here. So wow. There we go. Don't get her in started. She's plastic. already gotten uh, deep uh, deep on uh, my dad's and your dad's. Oh, so. man. She's smashed up. Yeah. She's probably going to be laying down here in a second yeah. by the end of the interview. Oh, shit. Well, uh, how you doing today, bud? I'm doing great, man. I'm I'm glad to be uh, cordial. He uh, cordially invited me this morning via text. That's right. That's right. I dropped everything I was doing. Oh, oh bro. my god! Thank you so Crazy. much. I know how busy you are. At the studio, I have you know I be doing things. That's right. Recording artist, just like yourself. What are you working on? Oh, well, you know, right now I'm working on a little roots project, actually. Really? I just did a dance hall one. Dance oh, Hall Time Machine. Yes, yes, that just came out. Go check it out. Big With Gary Dredd. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you very much. You owe me a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I was trying, I kind of would like to do a Roots album next. Perfect. So that's kind of my that focus. So I'm, I'm starting to write the songs and get them recorded. Hey, there you go, bro. I think uh, the best Roots album we ever did together was Emergency <laughs> Split. Yes. Yeah, and that's like as roots as it gets, just me and you, acoustic and yeah. singing. I feel like mm -hmm. it started off that way, and I kind of would like to circle back around. So stay I, tuned, there might be Emergency Spliff too, who yes. knows? Oh yes. shit, yes. oh shit. Yes. Or at least just Josh and Skilly and acoustic guitar again. That could be, yeah, we were talking about doing that, I think that's a good idea, mm -hmm. I would like that. I People so love too, that bro. album. Yeah, it's man. Album. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool, bro. Um... Shit, yeah, uh, I guess, um, let's just dive into it, dude. Okay. I wanted to, uh, people all the time are perplexed about our relationship and how we met, not perplexed, but perplexed. you know, what's the word, <laughs> what's the word, they're curious. Inquisitive. inquisitive, yeah, curious, curious. Yeah. How, how did we meet, <clears throat> how have we been hanging out for 20 years playing reggae together, so I'm gonna let you tell them the, the life story of Skilly. Okay, well... I was off in, uh, you know, I left in my early 20s, like around, I think it was oh, age should 20. should we start from high school? Yeah. We went to high school together. We went to high school together, Parkview High. Mm -hmm. Springfield uh, Mo. Class of, I was class of 98, Josh was class of... 99. 99. And, uh, yeah, so we're both from the same high school. But you didn't really know each other. Didn't really know each other. Cool. Knew of nope. each other. I knew of him. I remember seeing him in, and in the hallways. Trust me, I remember seeing him because... We had a uh, talent show, and I was into like Nirvana and stuff and playing rock music, and I was already had my own band and was singing and playing guitar and everything, but I uh, wasn't into reggae. And uh, we had a talent show, and I, clear as day, I don't remember shit from high school, but one thing I do remember, Scott Skiles, Mr. Kyle <laughs> Bell, Mr. Skillinja, Mr. Botaflex himself. What year was that? Junior, senior year? That that was ninety six or ninety seven. So sophomore, freshman, I think it was, sophomore. It was before senior year, junior year, yeah. Wow. Okay, so he yeah. gets up there on the mic, dude, and rips it up in his classic reggae Scotty style, man. DJing like in front of the whole school. Holy shit! The school went bananas, bro. I remember that was crazy. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> expect that. That was weird. And I was like, "What? There's a dude at our school that does like <laughs> reggae Jamaican music." I was like, "What the fuck?" And he kills it. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, I remember being blown away. Yeah. Even back then, I loved <clears throat> dance hall. I loved dance hall music, and I was so into it. And I remember, yeah, I remember going to parties and playing it. Sometimes they would, they'd be like, "Kyle, quit playing the dance hall. <laughs> we want to hear NWA. We want to hear." <laughs> It's new. Yeah, all and the I like Springfield all that kids. too. Yeah, but I'd be like, hey, but check this out. This is some shabba. This is That's some right. super cat. Check this out. Uh, so okay. you graduate first and then you take off, right? On your own mm -hmm. musical journey. Yeah, I played one year of college soccer that didn't go very well and I got hurt a lot. And uh, <laughs> I said, F this. Uh, I, I'm going to try to delve into my passion for reggae and dance hall music. So I went to the East Coast because that was the only place I had 
that I felt like had that like a hot pocket of that stuff going on mm-hmm. that I knew of. I found out there's other places, obviously. But uh, yeah, I went out there trying to do my thing, and I I kind of started in the rap side of things, being the dance hall guy with the rappers, and then I like kind of like moved on to actual like open up for straight dance hall artists that were just you know like your Beanie Mans and your Sean Pauls and all. You know, and that's in New York City. Yeah, Mr. Mm-hmm. Legs, Red Rat. I got to open up for all these uh, Lady Saw, all these like great artists. Wow, you know, just going on doing a couple. I didn't of songs think I knew that, bro. Them. That's crazy. Yeah, man. that's rad. And yeah. you were on all the Stings and everything. And I was on yeah a but bunch of Stings there. Two thousand. No, it's, they had Sting in, in Connecticut. They had and, oh. one in Connecticut, the one that they have every year in Jamaica. That was two thousand two. That was the year that um, uh, Ninja Man came out with the officer uh, Renato Adams was like the a, a big policeman and they had this whole thing that, it was crazy anyway long story <laughs> short that was that year and, and you were there i was there i performed on it on the show that and year. that's on the dvd if you guys look at the dvd what is it 2002 jamaica Steam? yeah i wasn't on the dvd though because i was a uh, early artist before oh. they only had like the top the tops on the DVD. oh okay you what? are on the Connecticut Sting DVD. But I am on the Connecticut Sting DVD, and they, yep. mi- and they mis- pre- uh, that's the misspelled one that my name. Oh, butterfly. bro. Hey, that's a Jamaican. If you get misspelled by a Jamaican... Uh, that's part of the initiation. Yeah, that's part of the initiation, yeah. bro. Jamaica misspells everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's a compliment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's a compliment. Yeah. But uh, yeah, go on eBay. Look it up. Connecticut Sting, 2000... Two? Two or three, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. under Botaflex. Under the, it's called Under the Umbrella or something, but yeah, Beanie Man, everybody's on there. Bounty Killer. All and who backed you up? Who was the band? Rough Cut. Rough Cut band, yeah. dude. Big Classic. Up. Nigel mm-hmm. Staff. Big up Ooh. from the Rough Ooh. Cut. It's been a long time since I've seen that video, but it was really Oh, and you get a forward, too, bro. The crowd goes bananas, yep. bro. Got a little nice oh, forward. Yeah, yeah. That, one. that was Remember, good. I had done the it's one on YouTube, Jamaica, I think, too. And I was mm-hmm. like, the Jamaica one was like a, like a learning experience because it was just like... I was just like, well, who are you? Like, like, <laughs> intense. Yeah, yeah, it was very intense. Like, I was like, I better get a lot better, man. I'm not really impressing <laughs> these people very much. Well, what styles. led you then from New York to Jamaica? Um, well, that because I, um, I kind of caused a little stir in New York. I, from opening it up, I was kind of like, uh, I met a manager. He got me, uh, his name's Miles, and he, uh, he smiles, not Miles. And he got me uh, opening up for all these artists when they would come through New York, you know. And then, and then I caught the attention of uh, uh, Ling, who is uh, who puts on Sting in Jamaica. I went and auditioned for him in New Jersey. He liked it, and they flew me out to do the show. And I got to stay awesome. in Jamaica. And then that would that would lead to me making lots of other trips to Jamaica later on. I stayed there for like a year uh, during Hurricane Ivan and. Oh my god! Learned a lot, you know. It's good yeah. learning experience, especially being a dance hall artist too. <coughs> you know, there's, you really, it's, you, you kind of need to make that pilgrimage. You so, submerged uh, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. study abroad program. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. gonna be so involved in dance hall and like heavy dance. Especially, hall and, yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's a thing that you really need to be into to make the experience. Yeah. Or, Didn't you, you got to record with some super famous people too when you were in Jamaica? Yeah. I did, I did. I got to, uh, you know, Jamaica and New York both. Uh, a lot Dean of... Frazier. Dean, wow. yeah. I got mm-hmm. to record with Dean. There's and... a 45 of that song on vinyl through uh, uh, VP Records. Oh, that was a different song, actually. Oh, That really? was one I had done um, in New York at HCNF, which is Long Island. That's where Shaggy's studio is. Right wow. There. Yeah. See? So if you don't know, you can go on eBay and look for that too. Bottleflex uh, forty five uh, by yeah, through VP it Records. Yeah, it's a really silly song too. It's horrible. But you check it out. <laughs> hey, that's cool, bro. That's, yeah. that's accolades, man. Hey. This dude is recorded in Jamaica if, and has. If you start off horribly, you can only go get better. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. <laughs> it only goes up. So uh, that's I don't all think... over twenty years ago now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I have a lot of similar experiences like that where I just, you know, I got to record with artists, Nardo Ranks, yeah, a whole bunch of other. That's a big people. tune. Yeah, I yeah. remember that tune. What's that tune? Uh, oh, I gosh, what is it? It's like a weed tune, bro. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Bottleflex and Nardo Ranks. That's or is that Skalinja? I think that was the Nardo. Oh, Nardo Ranks was on the other side of the song we were talking about with Eat on VP. He was on the B side. Oh yeah. Or maybe I was on the B side and he was on the A side. I can't even remember. Yeah, bro. Crazy. Crazy uh, shit, dog. So That's you... how old I am. My first thing came out on freaking vinyl, <laughs> bro. 
<laughs> and cassette tapes and shit. Well, what uh, brought you back to the States and then from Jamaica? Well, you know, I... I forgot what exactly had happened. You know, there would periodically I would go broke in New York because it's, it's just expensive. Yeah. Right. You know? And I was working at Tower Records at the time, like six bucks an hour. Oh my god! You know what I mean? I'm just barely eking by, living in like the corners of little apartments and stuff. So I think something happened to where I had to come back and just like get my health up and get some mom's cooking. You yep. know what I mean? Come home. And I think in one Good of those, old Missouri. One of those mm-hmm. trips is where we met. Yeah. It was one of those times I came back. You said sent our guard our good friend, our good mutual friend Cindy. Cindy, Cindy yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah. Old one, Cindy. Of my, us. one of my yes. dear best Pick friends. Up Cindy Rodriguez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She said, You gotta hear this guy, Josh Heinrichs. Uh, you guys went to high school, they have a reggae band. I'm like, What huh? What? They they had a reggae band? I was like, What? They, they never had a reggae band when I was here. Like, in Springfield, yeah. Missouri? And they what? went to my high school. I was yeah. like, get the shit out of here. <laughs> so I went kind of expecting to have a good time, but not expecting to uh, you and the band to be as good as you were. And I was like, wow, these guys are really pretty good. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like watching Josh. I'm like, this guy sings his ass off. He's good. He can hang, man. And then this is after me being around all the uh, you know, Jamaican mm. and the artists. I was like, whoa, whoa, this American guy's good, man. Cool. I knew that if we got together, we would make Thank some you, magic. <laughs> I had a feeling. I think you got up on stage that night, didn't you? I think so. Yeah, it was yeah. at the Springfield Brewing Company. The fever I think for the I flavor. Yeah, yeah. So did that happen before you came over with Cindy, or and or no? He came over after the, that. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because then we started making plans and shit. Right. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I remember the very first time I ever saw you, which is so funny. You guys were listening to some dance hall mixtape, and you guys were like. Like Josh and Kenny loving up in the corner, <laughs> just listening to it was Mr. Lex. Yeah, yeah, but talk your uncle. I was like, I was like they, they're listening to this. I was like, I love this song. Uh, this is like cooler people than I realized. Hey, that's yeah. cool. Shit. Yeah. I'll never forget the day she brought you over to the apartment. Kaya was maybe what ten months old at the time. Yeah, and Kaya I was feel like it was love at first sight oh, <laughs> with bro. you too. It was so cool to meet somebody else into reggae yeah. as much as, as as you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like all the guys in the band and Jar Roots were into reggae, but they weren't like psycho reggae heads like another dude I know right here. And yeah. I was like, oh, this dude, he knows like right like before I was into reggae, I was into baseball cards, and uh, I knew every single stat about every single card. I'd be like, oh, Ozzy Smith, he hit you know 38 home mm-hmm. runs in '86. So you know, I, I was a nerd, bro. Yeah. And That's uh, not nerdy, that's yeah, cool. I was very into but it. But it translates over into to reggae. Like yeah. I know everything about every artist, about everything, especially roots, you know, and stuff. Absolutely. And so then, whenever I meet Kyle, I'm like, oh shit, he knows everything about everything too. It's just meant to be. It was yeah. a match made in heaven. That's right. Mm. And 20 years strong, they are still making music, still yeah. jamming, yeah. still doing still it, still performing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, a lot of people don't know that we used to be in Jar Roots together. A lot of people know that I was in the band Jar Roots, but uh, I think a lot of people don't know that you were in the band for a little while, for a short period. Mm-hmm. You started uh, as the DJ. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I First think it was over a DJ. year at least, but I was, yeah, we were, I was running around with you guys all over the place there mm-hmm. for a second. Yeah, we toured all over the place, and we recorded an album together uh, yes. called Babylon Weed Cart. Yeah. Me and you wrote the whole thing together. Super fun album. Um, and, first uh, album together. Yeah, and uh, I think that was the start of us. And then uh, you, uh, right after that, went back to New York and started jamming again and doing stuff yeah. out there. I went back to New York, and uh, <clears throat> I had a, a thing going on where I was trying to kind of bust the dance hall vibe again, and it... it didn't I don't know something happened to the it to where it just didn't quite work out how how it was supposed to so yeah but, but that's, it did that, work out because that's when you well yeah, that's what I was gonna say he, he yes yes so I would have a daughter <laughs> You're I, good, babe. you know I would uh, uh th- you know that didn't work out I went back and then and uh, I knew when I had my daughter I had to kick it into gear I had to really like start to make this music work you know because. Now I'm responsible for another human being, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. holy moly, like I got a and I and all credit to you, you paved the way and you you taught me a lot of how to you know initially how to drop your records on you know these platforms. You oh yeah showed yeah. me how to do that all at the beginning and and that was big and not to mention play guitar on the whole Emergency Spliff album. Every single rhythm is Josh's guitar, so uh, it it helped me. 
you know, help me get a record in the in the yeah, because I had just quit Dark Roots in two thousand eight. Yeah, I didn't even have an album out. I had nothing out. <clears throat> yep, and I was, uh, just... I was like, dude. And Kyle was in New York, and I remember uh, we had, we 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 hadn't talked in a, like a year or so, probably because he was busy doing stuff, and I was busy with Jaw Roots, and yeah, you uh, just gone solo, yeah, and, and like, I quit the band, and uh, you were we finally talked on the phone, and I was like, bro, you should come back to Missouri and come come hang out for a little bit, just like for like a couple weeks, and maybe we'll record, yeah, and dude, we you came back, and I, I think that very first very day first you got day. here, we wrote the whole Emergency Spliff album yep. in like one day, remember yep. that, like two days. Yeah. You already had the songs I had written. So many, yeah, songs ready, but then yeah. you, we just fit them. To just the, made the rhythms right real rhythms. quick, and yeah. dude, I think we got it all together in like mm-hmm. a day or two, and then uh, we just went and recorded it real quick, and yeah. that was I was like, whoa, yeah. and then we put it out, and then people were really receptive. Still one of my favorite. Yeah, albums. shit, that uh, that song mm-hmm. is like the biggest tune right now on Spotify. I think for one of the biggest tunes for me and you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I, it's it's mm-hmm. a big tune. I think. But uh, that I think that that was the launch of like, dude. That's We're both solo of, now. Yeah. Let's just yeah. do something. Let's, yeah, let's do I saw. Well, you know, yeah. this will help pay some bills. Let me mm-hmm. try to get more albums out. Let me try to tour more. Let me try to just float this boat. You know what I mean? And yep. I think that's what we've been doing for since now. Then. Ten years yeah. now. Yeah. Over both ten. Twelve us. years now. Oh, thirteen. Yeah. Shit. Since two thousand nine. Yeah. And so um, it goes by fast, guys. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> now we've putting out so many albums and so many singles and so it's it's insane. It's a huge catalog mm-hmm. of work. Toured all over the US together. That's what I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about some fun stories that we've had together. Oh fun my stories. goodness. All yeah. kinds of fun stories. Gosh. What's what's uh what's like your favorite story that you can remember? Can you think of something? One of the favorite uh, times that we've had going on the road. Man. I can think of several. That's what I'm saying. Like it's hard to even start. Maybe you should tell one, and then okay, it'll, it'll, it'll burst the memory okay. for me. Um, <clears throat> this is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories of Scotty Skiles. Uh, we went to Guam. We've been okay. we've we've toured Guam oh, twice now. Right, right, right. Oh man. Oh man, this is a good one. Uh, and while we were in Guam, they the Calibus boys, they always treat us so well. We do we would get there and they had a brand new dab rig for me, dabs, weed, yeah. out the fucking wazoo. So nice. Oh, everything. And then we go downstairs in the morning to eat breakfast and they'd have like five star like chefs down there ready to cook for us and stuff. Like, damn, are we freaking This yeah. is yeah, we felt like celebrities, bro. But anyways, uh <clears throat> we get there and the place that they had us at was uh, connected to a water park. Is this okay to tell this story? Yeah. Tell this story. <laughs> oh my <gosh. laughs> This is a good one. So <laughs> you get to do things when you're not playing. So we were there for like a week. Yeah. And uh, we only had to play one night. It was like on a Saturday night. And we were there from like Wednesday to Wednesday or something. And so the, the hotel we were at was connected to a water park. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. If you don't know anything about Guam... <clears throat> It's four hours from Japan. So when we go, we played in Guam twice, and we've had to go to Japan twice to go to Guam. You have to stop in Japan and then catch another flight, and it's four hours. Anyways, so needless to say, Guam is a very um, Japanese tourist country. It's like a lot of Japanese tourists there. And uh, so we go to this water park, and we're all, Kyle, there's like a surfing thing right there where you like get on the surfboard and you Mm -hmm. try and surf like the wave thing, and it's like an automatic wave. And it's just me and Kyle and like twenty Japanese tourists all around the wave. <laughs> and Kyle gets on the surfboard, dude, and boom, he falls down, and there goes his shorts right with the wave, no. bro. And this dude was exposed to so many Japanese <laughs> oh tourists. God. Oh, correct. I was, I was yeah. and of course. I left my camera in the locker so it wouldn't get wet. Bummer. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, this, I wish I had video evidence right here, a picture. That's okay. At least it's uh, a core memory for you. Oh, it is a core memory. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah. I was crying. I looked over and all these tourists are cracking up. <laughs> and poor Kyle's trying to hide all of his stuff. Yeah. Dude. Oh, oh, my gosh. That was a good memory. Oh, poor Skelly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's happened a couple of times to me where I've jumped into water or fallen into water and lost my shorts. <laughs> Oh, that was so funny. Oh, gosh. Well, that was a good time. I can think of zillions of crazy times you two have. Sorry, not trying to embarrass you. I just thought that, that no, that's hilarious. Most, that's, that's a great story. Funniest it, stories that I remember of us imagine it, it being on just, the road together. I remember you laughing so hard that I thought you were going to maybe like fall into like the pool or like the surfboard. Oh, bro. Yep. You were dying, dude. It was... 
hilarious. Uh, it was straight out of America's And that scramble to get your pants back when they're over, they're like 20 yards. <laughs> like, yeah! Oh my god! I'm looking like a little white eel. Uh, dude, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh dear lord. You guys um, are a hot mess. Do you remember any good memories? Oh, oh man. my gosh. Oh gosh. I can, I can remember think of us so many. Getting really, for the first time we ever, when we, the first time we ever um, hung with uh, the homie in Vegas, <laughs> yes, the mix of edibles and oh, the shit. Ice tea. Uh, winking, winking, Brian, winking. I remember us taking, we having whole dinners just like snazz jazzed out to the the teas with like THC, just fully, just like, and, and I was drinking the tea, the iced tea all day that was infused with it. And then we had the meals, and then we got on stage. And I remember, for the first time in my life, being like having an out of body experience, like just sitting down in the middle of the show. I remember, and you're like, "What are you doing? You yeah. gotta sing, bro!" And I'm like, "Yeah," just like chilling out, like I'm from the doors or something. I can uh, just do that. Like I'm dude. not, I'm not good enough to just not do the show. Was the one where you sat down and <laughs> yeah. then didn't get back right. up. Let me yeah, tell the story, bro. I, I got this. To. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to jump up. I had a move I do where I'd sit down and act like I'm tired. Like James Brown, you know, like when they put the coat on, he's like, oh, you're too tired. You can't go on. You can't go on. And I really, I couldn't go on. I was like, oh, wait, no, I'm done. Like, <laughs> no, dude, we were like, give us all the weed you got, bro. We, we can handle it. When he yeah. was like, you guys want an uh, <laughs> infused meal? Mm-hmm. Infused meal. <laughs> and we were like, dude, we're the weed champions. This is before we had our own dad's elixir, or before we even done dad's elixir, or any of that stuff. We just smoked a lot of weed. And so he was like, do you want us to uh, infuse your meal? And we were like, shit, yeah, dude. Yeah. And he's like, just like a little bit or a lot. And we are like, do everything, bro. We don't give a shit. We're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I, we learned our lesson. First time ever. First time ever that I got... Dude, what he probably gave us like yeah. two, three thousand yeah. milligrams each, you know? Like you yeah. said, it was in our salad dressing and our food and our felt tea. Like my organs were dancing around in my body. Or <laughs> Bro. Something like that. I was like running. Do you I, I kept walking dancer. around circles. We were like both a... sitting outside, oh, and I remember. Too much. We were... <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> that was the highest I've ever been in my life. Yeah. 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 And even though I can do like three, four thousand milligrams now and drink the dads, and I'm used to it now. Yeah. But that was the very first, first time. time ever. Bro. I remember we were sitting out back and we had like 30 minutes to showtime. And I remember looking at my hands and they had fucking tracers. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, am I tripping right Dude, now? I thought, I was like, it was like, a, <coughs> it was like you meant to take Dayquil and you took Nyquil or something. <laughs> I had my own body was looking at me perform. You took Dayquil and you I floated out of it and my body was watching me and was going, mm, you're not doing that good tonight. <laughs> Bro, yeah, this guy. that wasn't that good. Oh my you're God. Too up. Then maybe, they're like, maybe not so much next time. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. This shit fucked us up, dude. I recall um, some... And people after the show were like, that was great, guys. Oh, like, uh, yeah, I know, bro. I think they were just saying that to be nice that night. As soon as I got... <laughs> I was so worried. I was like, this might be... Maybe. This might be the time that I actually can't perform. Yeah. Like, I've never been so high I can't perform. We smoke weed every day professionally. I've and never lost the rhythm dude, ever before. It's gone. And, oh and then I was like... And then I was like, oh, my God, people are going to be like, yo, Josh Hyder's supposed to be this big weed head, and then he got so high he couldn't perform. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was like, oh shit! But yeah, luckily, right? when we got on, as soon as I got on stage and the band started playing and I started singing, I, it all came to me. I was like, oh, okay, I felt cool. But like you said, when Kyle got on stage, I think yeah, he like sat down right right in the middle of the first song. Like he like 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 crouched down, and yeah, I was like, gonna, what? What's he gonna I'm do? Gonna pop up real fast. <laughs> and then he just kept saying, he just kept sitting down for the whole song. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It was hilarious. Like Mario, and stop jumping. He don't jump. The B button don't work anymore. Oh, but. bro! I remember I went over to you. and I was like, dude, are you okay? We stopped the show or whatever. I was like, are you, are you all right? And you're like, I'm good. I just thought I was gonna stand back up. I was gonna jump up. <laughs> this <laughs> okay, never yeah. happened. <laughs> uh, Yo, that's high. Oh man, I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember a lot of times. I remember me and Ian Foreman walking through the woods and finding out later that they were just infested with bears and it was a horrible idea. And they told us before we went to our cabin, they're like, "Hey, to uh, so get to an open guys... mic where I wasn't even getting paid." <laughs> <for that." laughs> Dude, they're like, "Don't uh, when you guys get to your Do cabin, not... <laughs> stay in your cabin, don't leave." And we're like, "Why?" And like, "Cause there's bears everywhere and you could get attacked." And we're like, yeah. "Cool, 
That's awesome. Yeah. No, nope. I didn't even that. hear that part of the story until <laughs> after we got back. I was like, oh man. Yeah, dude, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Everybody's like, where's Kyle? Where's Kyle and I Ian? Like, I was like, this is could be the night. This is it. This is Reggae the artist, uh, Death by Bear. Death by Bear. Ooh. Molly. No, oh, yeah, man. knock on wood, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say that. That's, uh, uh, terrible. That's a good one. Uh, oh my gosh, I I always remember. I mean, we've been touring and traveling and vacationing together for 20 years but well, i Kyle's always think about when the babies were vacation. little and we used to do the texas and corpus tours and take the kids and uncle kyle would be just stuck in the back of the car oh, with the, the three kids, babies yeah. yep. <laughs> the whole way and he would do such a great job it was yeah. always fun Fun, fun times, fun I memories. I think that's what cemented you in the family, bro. The corpus trips, right. yeah. Multi- multiple Staying Uncle at Kyle grandma's, trips. And <laughs> yeah. eating grandma's cooking, following the rules. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I do remember getting uh, food poisoning together. I think Josh was immune. I don't think it affected him. But bro. me and you ate the Mexican food at the uh, food uh, truck in Washington uh, when we had the camper. Mm-hmm. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was horrific. Yeah, I, I don't that. know how you were able to pull it off and go back out and play, because I remember having to listen to you guys from the camper and never being able to get it back together to go oh, out. Man. That was that was fun. See yeah. the ups and downs. Yeah, so many things. Yeah, so many crazy things. I remember uh, the three of us getting hotel rooms at three o'clock in the morning, and then going to the room, and it was already occupied. Slipping a room that I wasn't seeing supposed feet, to sleep in. That was just recently. Moving. Oh, the ghost room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Room, the where, haunted room where somebody got assassinated. Like, <laughs> like you weren't supposed to sleep in that room. Yeah. Bro, he comes out the next morning, and the guy next door he's out there smoking. <laughs> And he comes out, and the guy's like, yo, man, where are you staying? And the guy's like, I slept in this room. He goes, dude, you stayed in that room. <laughs> he didn't even fucking lock. He had to prop up the uh, chair, I was right? just a sitting duck that night. Anybody uh, that came in there and just... Done. Uh, Luckily, we were in the middle of nowhere. It didn't have anything <clears throat> in it. It didn't have anything, no toiletries, towels, I didn't, TV, sl- I didn't sleep TV. under the, uh, the covers. <laughs> I remember, I was like, nah, there's something wrong with you. I'm not sleeping I just anymore. remember the next morning hearing that the lady uh, I'm fully like, clothed, slept The life of a rock star, bro. These yeah. people don't know, bro. <laughs> you got it great, man. No, thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Shit. Oh. Fun. Oh, I remember waking up multiple times, being in the middle of a car wreck. <laughs> has it's happening? Like, oh, gosh. yo, bro, being in the back of police cars with this guy multiple times. Oh, bro, I was like, oh man, we could just shoot different scenes of us by the time. Oh shit! Oh. Hey, all these young bands, we meet all these young bands on the road, and yeah, they, they just got... throw us in jail for weed, guys. Oh, mad. We it's did, crazy. We used to, we used to, we, me and this dude been fucking searched so many times, fucked with by the police for weed. So. And Young men smoked weed in front of police. It's crazy and, yeah. how the times, times have are changed, changing. You know? It's insane. Bro. I used to have to walk three miles to snow <laughs> in the snow to school with molasses running down the hill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh gosh! No. And and my shoes were too tight. Hey, this is some mm. of the uh, cheese hash that I we just got in L.A. Man, so. that's we are right. all. And, and old. I mean, we're in the generation that remembers life before cell phones and dating mm-hmm. before phones mm-hmm. and the internet. And mm-hmm. we're like the last of the Mohicans. That's right. Well, um, let's see. The, what, what, what else can we talk about here, bro? What's your uh, best weed story from the road? Best weed story from the road. What do you think? We've gotten, we've had some really, really amazing experiences getting hooked up with weed, going to dispensaries, and just being able to get whatever we want. You know, honestly, like, I think one of the most... Sometimes we get spoiled. One, Yeah, there's been so many times, I think, just, just being, yeah, just being with homies, getting to relax before the show, like, I remember being in Guam, like, when they gave us that nice hotel, and we were out there on the balcony, just chilling in the nice breeze, you know, that's... I remember like times like that, just being excited, burning, 
being super happy, yeah. being somewhere mm-hmm. different, you know what I mean? On home. the other side of the world. Right. You know? Shit, bro. People treating you really nice. Yeah. And, do you remember crowd, when we got off the... your songs. That crazy. was cool, bro. All of these Guam kids. Guam, <clears throat> Guam goes cra- crazy for reggae. That's something that people don't know. Hawaii, too. But uh, we've been to Hawaii, I don't know how many times together. Five or six times, probably? Quite a few. Yeah. There was a run there where it seemed like we were young. Every year. Yeah. Maybe twice a year. Um, but uh, when we went to Guam the very first time, do you remember this? We got off the airplane, and the boys picked us up. And uh, we got in the car, and dude, the radio was already playing us. Mm-hmm. And then we stop at like a gas station because we wanted to get some smokes and some beers. And uh, we go inside, and the guy is like, "Dude, are you guys fucking Josh Hires and Skalinja? You remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. And we're like, "Holy shit!" We're like, "We've only met one person so far on this island. They already knew who we were." You know, and then they're playing our music like every song on the radio, like multiple radio stations. I was like, "Damn." Mm-hmm. Definitely made you feel good. Uh, Guam loves reggae, man. Yeah. It's always yeah. wild. Like you never know. As an artist, you never know where they're gonna like your music at. And you just get, and you just gotta like be happy. Somebody likes your music because we always. I think we're always trying to impress the people we grew up around. You know, I, mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to impress my hometown and them. Well, with reggae, man, you never know who's gonna like you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They could be. Yeah. You know, you gotta be be happy of a. Fans, you know. Yeah. Gosh, you Thank guys have fans Guam. all over yeah, the world. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and so Hawaii. Fans covering Hawaii, your California. music in the Philippines and oh I mean, shoot, all man, over the place there's in multiple Brazil. videos of people uh, covering emergency spliff in the Phil- different yeah. bands, reggae mm-hmm. bands in the Philippines yeah. covering emergency spliffs. But which my is lady. crazy, uh, you know, the name Skillinja, and I had no idea when I made this when I was made this name for myself as an artist. I just changed it from Butterflex to Skillinja. I had no idea that Skillinja is actually a name in the Philippines. It's a, it's like a family name. Really? Yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. crazy. Well, dude, you want to know something? I don't think it is, bro. Or maybe I'm wrong. No, crazy. it's not because you want to know something crazy? People name themselves after you in the Philippines. No lie. And this is a fact, a science fact. You want to know why? Because there's two kids named Josh Heinrichs in the Philippines mm-hmm. after and me, then bro. Last name. These Whoa. people have written to me and sent me pictures of their babies, and they're like, My name's baby is, is Josh Heinrichs, da da da, whatever their last name is. Huh. And I'm like, So their name. I, thought I just accidentally made it like a name that was like already existed. No, bro. It. That's how popular it is. I mean, it may be, but it's also possible that. Yeah, we no. got to investigate. I'm, inve- yeah. I'm telling you right now. Do some investigating. There. I'm going to share on my page. I will put it up right here. Right here. Here's a little picture. You can't see it right now. Uh-huh. But here's the baby that's named after me in the Philippines. And here's another one. There's two that yeah. I know of. Oh, that's, Isn't that crazy? That's wild. And I'm like, I'm like, no, they're not named after me. I'm like, why would they name their baby Josh Heinrichs? Then I go on their page. They have, have, have like uh, shared like 50 of my songs. Wicked. And I'm like, okay, the baby's definitely named that's, after me. And I'm like, holy cool. shit, this is crazy. They love reggae oh, in the Philippines. But I have seen your name a hundred times on there. If you look up Skalinja Philippines... There's people that call themselves Skalinja over there after mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Yeah. And there's multiple and pages. That there's thought. multiple pages on <laughs> Facebook that are named as Skalinja or Instagram, and they're all like Filipino kids. Yeah. And they call themselves, they I like, stole that your too. name. I was like, yeah. So cool. I think that's awesome. It's like a tribute, bro. Yeah. yeah. They have some cool. great cover bands that are, yeah. play your music there, oh too. My that's it. Look it up right there mm-hmm. on YouTube. Skalinja, Emergency Spliff. Philippines. There's all kinds of bands that cover them. Uh, three or four different bands that I can think of right now. So if you just look up Skalinja Emergency Spliff cover, you'll be amazed at how many bands all over the world cover this dude's music. It's yep. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. <clears throat> uh, favorite show that we've ever done? Ooh. I do love the Janus live shows. I would say my favorite show, though. Janus in uh, St. Pete, Florida. Yeah. Those are always tops. I always love <clears throat> those. Um, the One Loves. You know, the Cali Roots. Yeah. One loves. I've had fond mem- memories of playing that show. Mm-hmm. And just like we said, Guam before, you know, that sh- the, the shows in Guam, the packed shows in Guam. Uh, playing in Jamaica, even though I well, maybe, you know, didn't get the greatest response when I was young, I still remember it fondly, like being looking the at the opportunity, crowd. yeah. Yeah. And that's um, awesome. Uh, there was one time I did a show that there's no tape of, and it was the Sting, they had a Sting in Miami. And I came out, and man, I ripped that up. And I always wished, like, does anybody have footage of that happening? Dude, yeah, you know there's got to be footage. Somewhere. I don't know, man. Yeah. People like, out there, if yeah. you can find that, Skilly would love to see it. What yeah. year is that? Oh, that was around 2003. 
and it was uh yeah like it was an early segment uh miami sting i found videos of it but they don't have the early segment on there but mm. and there was another one too uh in the palladium new rochelle one time i opened up for bounty killer and lady saw and yo i'm i got a ford that like even made me say like what the heck happened like oh, shit. the whole from front to back <laughs> like like Probably you slayed it. I, man, it was an addictive feeling. Just like oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. something happened inside of me when I got that. I was like, oh, I want to chase that feeling now for the rest of my life. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> for the rest of my I, life. I, a lot of dancehall reggae artists probably know if you get a big, crazy, you know, huge, mm-hmm. robust forward, it can. It's kind of a good feeling. Oh yeah, bro. And uh, you know, I haven't had a lot of them over my life. You know, that's not really what it's all about. But every once in a while, something like that happens, and it's really it's a cool feeling. Oh, bro. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Just like. Selling out shows or having an album hit number energy. one. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're putting yeah. something out there and it's being received in a beautiful way. It makes you feel great. That's awesome. right. That's mm-hmm. right. What's I love a... it. What are you rolling up there, Josh? Okay. Talk you about know? it. <clears throat> Let's, Let's talk. Get weedy. Let's get weighty. Okay. Well, I, I mixed up, uh, like I said, I got some of the. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go through a, a typical Josh and Scotty night. Okay. We played. Uh, Friday and Saturday last weekend in Long Beach. Yes. And Sunday in Costa Mesa. Mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday were ex- excellent shows. They were both sold out. And uh, dude, being the dudes that we are, that we love weed, it, it, it is contagious. I feel like other weed people come to the show and they set up shop. And dude, these people laid us out some fire chronic. Man, we got we got hella good chronic all weekend, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, this guy comes up to me with his son. It's like probably like 19 or 20 years old. And he's like, yo, dude, we're, we're growers. And I was like, sweet, bro. He's like, we want to... Um, we want to let you uh, check out some of our hash. And I was like, lay it on me, dog. I'm down. And, dude, he pulls out this giant stick of hash like that long. It looked like a Laffy Tab. Or what's it called? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, something. You know, like a, like a long one. And, uh, dude, he breaks off like a little tiny piece at the end. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, he's like, just give me a little trier. And he's like, dude, here's this. And he gave me the whole stick. And he just kept a little tiny piece for himself. And yeah. I was like, what? It was like, what? Fruit, it was like a fruit roll-up. Oh, so it, it was. was bigger than a fruit roll well, That's right, yep. baby. So... Uh, and so there's some of that in here is what you're saying? Yes, that's the big stinky cheese, bro. We were smoking that all weekend and all week. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you're mixing that up with the ganja? What's the ganja? Yeah, the ganja is uh, some stuff we got at Fritz's Firehouse yesterday. Big up Fritz's Firehouse in Miami, Oklahoma. Oh, yes. Fritz, Fritz. Oh, Scotty knows. Oh, Skill did you mix knows. them up again? No, he got the meals. Oh. No. Oh, yeah, I did mix all three of the weeds That's up. what I'm saying. Yeah. This is a kamikaze so, again. Yeah, so these are oh, three uh, ounces right here. You can get an ounce uh, for $75 an ounce, and it is good-ass weed. It is not bad weed at all, bro. People are like, How, what's, that, what's that Midwest weed like? Well, it's fucking the Crons, dude. Good. Yeah. It's the Crons, and We dude. just played in L.A. last weekend, and the weed we got was just as good as this weed, right? Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so these are $75 an ounce, or if you buy two, you get one free. How cool is that? So Big Ups Miami, Oklahoma. Fritz, Fritz yeah. Firehouse. And they also oh, carry... Yeah. They got our uh, elixirs. That's mm-hmm. right, baby. We got the 1,000 uh, milligram Josh Heinrichs Orange Dream and the 500 milligram uh, Skill and Jappel. Skill and Jappel. Yeah. So if you want to go dark or darker, you can. There you go. Around. The darkest realm. 1,500 milligrams. Do both of them. If you do... Take a video, tag us in it, send send mm-hmm. it to us. Fritz has got all the good stuff. That's they right. really do. Okay, here we are. We're back. All right, so I am rolling a spliff of all the three different uh, oh, weeds. Wow. We I call it spliff. It's not a traditional spliff like Scotty smokes with a tobacco. You know, he, you're a better roller than I am because I, I don't know how you roll all that weed into that one paper like that. <laughs> Lots of practice, my uh, <laughs> Shit. It's an art form. Yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. better. We just have different forms, baby. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you roll yours really pretty Yours are like too. a cigarette. Uh, so we got some uh, yeah, Gorilla you. Glue <laughs> 4. Um, Yarapin. Ice cream cake. Button punchers. <laughs> and some Platinum OG. There we go. And uh, some stinky ass uh, cheese hash in there. Mm. Also wanted to throw in a little bit of the runts that I got yesterday. It's a special little aether that I got because it was too fire to get too much. Ooh. So Josh, that good? Dude, that it good. It was fire. That good. It uh, smells like runts. You got to smell. Here. It's so sweet. Ooh. 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 They even pretty put Ooh. it in the pretty purple. Private stash. Private stash right there, baby. Private, Private stash. 
I'm gonna throw a little bit. So in he here blends too. them all together like a '90s kid does with their soda. Make a kamikaze or oh, yeah. call it suicide. Mm. We call them kamikaze. We used to do those at the airport. Yeah. Not the airport. At the rolling scroll skater rink. We used to do those at the airport. <laughs> Fucking, are you old, bro? Yeah. I no, thought you meant. How like, do you get the roller YouTube. rink and the airport mixed up? <laughs> we used to just, I thought you meant like you two we, used to do that at the I airport. Know, I was like, together. I don't remember us hanging like, suicides at the airport. I was like, that's so did. cute. I was like, we, we uh, used to just drink yeah. beers at the airport. You guys uh, are uh, you. Skateport. It was called oh, Skateport. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I got airport and skateport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, RIP Skateport, man. Yeah, they used to have the hard hard floor that was like concrete. <laughs> Fell on it quite a bit. Oh, trying to skate God. fast and press girls. Oh yeah, bro. That Speed was, skate. That Speed was skate. Cool place, man. Right. How many times did you couple skate to Brian Adams? Everything oh I do, oh. I do it for you. Never. Biggest tune of our childhood, right there, bro. Oh, Robin that's Hood. That's when I skated off to concessions. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if you couple skated with somebody, it was almost like okay, that you're together. Now. Oh like, yeah, bro. What? And the whole the whole school's like, oh my god, they're couple skating, they're dude. Couple they're skating. holding hands, bro. Oh. It's oh, official, man. dog. It's that's official. why you don't do it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Oh my gosh, babe. Guys. What did you? What were you talking about earlier? You had some questions. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to get me to remember. Things we like to do. Oh, when uh, to kill time when you're touring and you're not playing together. What what do you guys do to kill time? Um, Besides smoking weed, of course. We watch a lot of TV. Well, what do you guys weed. like to watch? Oh, comedy. We always watch a shitload of movies. Dude, we were stuck on uh, what you do in the shadow. What we do in the shadows oh, for yeah. a solid year. So. That's a fucking classic. <laughs> I can see why. Uh, I Does mean, he make you watch nothing but Seinfeld and Dougie and? We make each other watch different things. Like I made him watch Zoolander again on last trip. Yeah. I don't know why. That's not funny. He likes Zoolander. Oh, yeah, 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 I didn't have to. Force it's him. nothing that we have to like watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both love uh, the same thing. Yeah. Is there anything he does or watches that you don't want to, but you do anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Half the shit I watch, probably. <laughs> I will ask the same question. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, uh, I, I can't recollect it, a time. I, I mean, there's probably. I'm sure there's been times where I was just like, "Oh, what the fuck is this shit?" That we <laughs> but I don't know. You know, like, like when it's like wings or something. Wings? <laughs> I like wings. Okay. Yeah. Wings is one you do. I, like I love wings. He has like, like, said, like Josh has his like favorite like, shows and he wears them out and he watches them over and over and over again. And I But Scotty will watch them with me. Grown on me, but the kids have their certain ones that like they either like and will watch with them or oh, they dude. just completely rub them the wrong way. When and I if, turn on wings in the morning if the kids are around, they're like, No Dad No No Brian and Joe. No, <laughs> uh, no. Or yeah. for Kaya, she can't stand when he watches King of Queens. She, oh, yeah. she doesn't like Dougie. I don't she know just what's doesn't what's like show it. With, you know what show <laughs> that I don't that everybody loves that I never got into is that one with the Sheldon? Oh, Bazinga oh, show. Dude, we never show, watched bro. it either. See, that's what me and you are buddies, bro. We Sorry, might be. Sheldon, we might get into. burned for this. We might not <laughs> talk about well, you can that. Cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Mm. No, I feel like everyone show? loves that show, but I'm... I think it's just because he's smarter than me, and I felt intimidated. Uh, <laughs> it's fake smart. Mm. They're actors. It's not fair. Fake smart. Oh, you yeah. can't fake that. That's like wrestling. It still hurts. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> we got a lighter. We got a lighter, Scotty. Yes. Um, what was in the? Oh, what kind of music do you listen to? People want to know. Um. You know, I listen to all my reggae's, my dance halls, my roots. Do you have a current favorite? Uh, uh, current favorite? Mm. I'm weird. I'll like go pick an old artist that's not maybe like currently big, mm-hmm. but there and at some time I liked them. Yeah. And now that we have all these Spotify and things, we can delve into. Can we just find play new whatever stuff you want. By old yep. artists you like. I am really a fan of just '90s dance hall. I like Fuck all yeah. the artists that came from that era. Mm-hmm. All of them. Mr. Lex, freaking uh, Red Rat, you know, Beanie, Killer, all those artists, I listened to them. And then Idonia and Cartel and some of the ones that came after that, too. And I like a lot of dance hall, but uh, I like, like, old, like, 80s music, too. Like, 
Uh, we were we were Don Henley. We were talking about Don Henley. I've been listening <laughs> to some mm-hmm. Dirty Laundries and oh, some yeah. like, stuff like that. Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like. I'll have because you can't just listen to dance hall all the time. Yeah, that's just like part of the night. You know what I mean? There's other things. You, like me and my girlfriend, our basic routine at night <coughs> is just you know make dinner, maybe have a couple of drinks, listen to music, and we'll listen to everything. We'll listen to rap. We'll listen to reggaeton. We'll listen to old like. Mexican music, we'll listen to old reggae music, old roots, and maybe some dance hall for a while. I love it. And That's then, us. That's a typical Kyle and Naomi <laughs> yeah. evening. Yeah, and then a bunch of, then I always have all these crazy dub plates and stuff that I like to play that are on iTunes and stuff that I just like, so it's my little weird collection of music. Fuck yeah, I love that. That's right. That's what yeah. we do. We listen to everything. It just yeah. depends on the mood and what we're doing. Yeah, and... When I'm on the road with him, he'll you play stuff, this? and I'll, I'll hear stuff from his collection I like, and I'll put that online. Yeah, same, mm-hmm. same. Like, Vice versa. Uh, our tune, uh, Air Mike was influenced by... Uh, oh, the Ari Lennox tune. Ari Lennox tune, yep. Night Ride. And yep. I didn't know that until he played it for me. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Little known fact. That's right. kind of ran with it. Hell yeah. So, or maybe um, it wasn't just a known fact, no, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see what we got coming up. We have Seymour. Yep, we're playing in uh, Yep, Seymour, Missouri next weekend. What else we have coming up? I'm curious. Do you have um, Isn't that this coming that's this one? weekend? I that's this like coming there's Yeah, one. there's another one we have too. I can't remember. I don't know. You can always go to skillinja.com, joshhines.com. We'll put it right here. Yep. It's right Boom. there. Right there. Yeah. There's the date. Sorry, baby. I think I just got some action yeah. on you. Oh, you found it. Scrappity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The show we can't remember because we're high right now is right now. Right there. Right there. Boom. That's right. Um, yeah, cool. Well, you could dub it in. I'll just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? <coughs> yes, sir. I love it. Do you have uh, any new music coming out or anything? Um, you just released Dance All Time Machine and. Great. Chateveli, not Shot, too long ago. Oh yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. speaking of Chateveli, we have a video for Chateveli that is dropping, I believe, on four twenty. Oh, oh whoa, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And shout out to Dank Street, Chris Chapman, who shot the video. That's right. And did he a really just good job. where'd you do Pick that? Up Ricky at? Hayes. We did that in California. Uh, I had done that like three weeks before me and Josh just went on tour, so I just went down there to shoot that video. And I had done another video named Autobahn, but and then we did Chateveli after Autobahn. Nice. Fuck yeah. Yep. Bro, you're purple. <laughs> you turn. Bro, you're like that G.I. Joe that turns. <laughs> <laughs> you you it doesn't cup. reflect that in my image whenever they show me. They're not giving you your youthful glow. That's bro. right. That's, oh. that, that's that. I just took a That super pink super undertone, that rosy glow. undertone. People are like, how are you guys in your 40s and you look so young? <sighs> A lot of coughing. Lots like of coughing, weed. Like the blood <laughs> circulates. And... Weed, <coughs> coffee. Um... <coughs> and uh, lots of weed. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's right. pretty much it. Well, is there anything that uh, you wanted to talk about? Anything more? Um, any hot pressing issues? Um, oh. We just had the, the Grammys. The Grammys just happened. Oh, yeah. Lord. Oh, we wanted to talk hot about topic. That. Hot okay. topic. Hot okay. topic. Uh, add that a later. Hot topic. Hot topic. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, shit. I, I didn't even see any of this. I guess I'm out of the loop. I don't really pay attention, but Katie told me about it, and then whenever I picked up Kyle today, was, he told me about it, too. It was kind of the hot thing last night. Yeah. On the uh, Soja, our homies, we are friends with them. We've done many a show with them, hung out with them, chill, and... Uh, they won the Grammy. Uh, so that's, I think it's their second Grammy that they've won. I, I know at least, and uh, over a bunch of Jamaican artists. And uh, great, that's awesome. I mean, they deserve it. They've been around longer than me and Kyle have been around. They're like twenty two or twenty three years, I think. So, they definitely paid their dues. They've jammed with everybody in the reggae scene, all the Jamaican dudes. So, yeah. And I saw a forward from all the Jamaican artists. You yeah, know, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. I think just I think just some fans, you know, get. I think what it is is a lot of people don't know uh, that there's so many different reggae groups and there's you can actually have one that wins a Grammy that's super popular that you've never heard of. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. still, that can that can happen. And and when you first look at it too, you're like, oh, there's a bunch of white guys won the Grammy. Who are these guys? And you might listen to we a couple of songs and be like, I don't get it. But 
you know, coming from a guy who loves dancehall and wasn't really hip on American reggae, it you know, there's a lot of good American reggae out there. Yeah, there's good, good writing, good musicians. So just been working hard. And so just, just like that, you guys you know, for twenty those guys, odd years. You know, so. They they deserve it. Uh, yeah, you totally. Know, look yeah. at their catalog of work and, and congrats. And they deserve it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And totally. everybody deserved it. You oh know, yeah. Just, oh, and it's yeah. just a dumb award. You know, none of us are based in our playlist. Oh, uh, Soja won the Grammy. I'm only dumb. listening to Soja. It's, yeah. right. Right. it's pretty fucking yeah. awesome. But in the grand scheme yeah. of things, yeah. they're all amazing artists, and it's a well deserved award. Yes. Yeah. Totally. And, you know, yeah. There's always going to be haters. Haters are going to hate. We won't hate. even talk about That's what they about drink is hate or hate. We just need a bigger reggae show in America that it's a little more expansive that has the dance hall categories, right? roots Bro. categories, <laughs> duo categories. <laughs> Reggae Awards, you guys could start it. There you go. <coughs> Next thing. Oh, well, I'm fucking up the shit here. Yeah. This joint is I, uh, killer. That was good, yeah. I think that um, it's all the hash that's in there. It's knocking me out. Yeah, it's hardcore. Uh, I was telling my son this morning, that's funny, or last night we were, we were tra- taking a drive, and I was like, man, you know, uh, I've said this a million times. People have heard me say this, but... I really think that reggae has a chance someday in this world to, to blow up mainstream big time. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that it's not already mm-hmm. well known. But uh, I was telling him, you know, I've said this, my wife's heard me say this a hundred times, but Nirvana completely changed the game. You know what I'm saying? Like all it was was like butt rock and like Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and shit. <laughs> <Butt> <laughs> <rock>. <laughs> Nirvana comes out with Smells Like Teen Spirit and instantly the next day all those bands are nerds. You know what I'm saying? That whole scene was just nerdy, bro. And uh, changed the whole thing. And I'm not trying to say that we can make something nerdy or something. I'm just saying like musical new musical yeah. tastes change like, in right. a drop of a hat. I and, didn't think it was nerdy. I thought it was cool AF. Well, it's still cool. It's just like, No, know. but back in the day, like, people were like, oh, you still listen to Motley Crue and stuff? Like, have you not heard of Nirvana? Oh, I yeah. misunderstood you. I think, oh, There's um, some kid out there going, are you still listen to Sklinger right now? Uh, no, I'm no, sorry. I think that reggae <laughs> could have that. Them, yeah. All it takes is one giant, games. one, one, one band to have one big tune, like Soja, or Slightly Stupid, or something like that, and... Who knows, that could be a tipping point because once Nirvana got big with Smells Like Teen Spirit, then it was like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. There's like so many bands like with that uh-huh. same kind of scene and it, it, like it just opened the door and people were like, oh, I'm addicted to that sound. I want more of it. And mm-hmm. they're like, well, hold yeah. on, dog. We got a whole scene of it. Yeah. So I think yeah. if reggae ever has that hit, that one big hit, and it opens the door for American reggae, people will be like, holy shit. There's a lot of good American reggae bands. You mean bands. more so than just like Shaggy and Sean Paul? Yeah, because that's not American that. reggae, and that's like a different kind of. That's like that's like traditional standard kind of reggae. Even though it's not, it's not like roots mm-hmm. like Bob Marley. It's like more like dancehall new style. But I'm saying like yeah, like like if someone like in our in our kind of genre, kind of you know, like American, how Sublime did in the nineties. Yes, like if Sublime hit now, I think it would st- it would open a can of reggae worms, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And then they'd be like, oh shit, there's like, even though Soja's not like Sublime, it's still that same kind of American reggae style. You know what I'm saying? It's still got the beat. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't like that, you'll like Revolution. If you don't like that, you'll like Josh and Skilly. Mm-hmm. If you don't like that, you'll like, you know what I'm oh, saying? There's a lot to offer. Yeah, that. and there's a lot of really good bands. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I'm saying. A lot of really good talent out there. So hopefully one day it, it pops off. But if not, we'll just stay this cool niche thing that the, only the cool weed smokers and cool people know about. Right. Life is good either fucking way. That's right. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> so, congrats to Soja. Yep. Congrats Much to love. Soja. Congrats and, to all And to homies. everybody else. Yep. yep. It's awesome. Yep. And, good job. Uh, yeah, man. I guess that's, that's it. <coughs> yep. <coughs> Time to make lunch. <coughs> Time to make lunch. Time to make lunch. Cool. All right. Well, Skilly, it was nice having you on. Thank, Thank you, bro. Thanks, Thanks for, having for coming. Me, guys. Please come back. I Feel will. free to bring Naomi or. Um, I'll see you this weekend when we play our show. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> okay. Cool, bro. Party. Thanks everybody for watching Josh's World, a show about nothing woo, and woo, woo. Wade. Party on. <laughs> Party on, dudes. Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to give you a little bonus clip for everybody that watched. Uh, thank you for watching the full weed cast. We love you. Uh, 
This clip is for you. Uh, it's a very, very special clip that I wish we had talked about in the podcast. I forgot to talk about it, and I meant to bring it up with Skilly. But uh, one very special time, we were uh, flying home from a show, me and Skilly and my wife, and uh, we were at an airport. I don't remember which airport. And uh, we heard this old man at our terminal waiting for the same flight as us. And he was, like, just loud on his phone, like in a Brooklyn, New York accent, just oh yeah, oh my God, all right, you know, and like talking to somebody like his wife or his daughter, but just overly loud. And everybody in the terminal just kept like looking over at him and like, this guy was like crazy loud. And we're like, okay. So I uh, just thought it was funny, but I'm like looking at him and I'm like, dude, I think that's freaking uh, Tony Orlando. And he's, he's a pretty famous dude around here in the Missouri Springfield area because he has a show in Branson, uh, which is like 30 minutes away from here. And uh, so... I'm like, I think that's Tony Orlando. And at the time, right when this happened, uh, he had just starred in that movie, That's My Boy, with uh, Adam Sandler and Andy Samberg. And I think he plays Adam Sandler's dad in that movie. But he, like, cusses a whole bunch, and he's super over the top and crazy. And uh, he was pretty much acting just like that at the airport. It was hilarious. Just super over the top, loud on his phone call. Like, on speakerphone, too. Everybody could hear him. It was funny. And uh, so I told Kyle, I was like, dude, as soon as he gets done with that phone call, we got to go over there and get a picture with this dude. This is hilarious. I can't believe that's Tony Orlando. And sure enough, he hangs up the phone and we walk over there. And I'm like, hey, are you Tony Orlando? And he's like, yeah. And we're like, holy shit, bro. Can we get a picture with you? You know, we're fans. And he was like, of course, of course. Come on over here. And uh, we're like, hey. He's like, what are you, what are you guys doing? What are you, what are you flying home for? And we're like, we're musicians too. You know, we're singers too. And he's like, really? What, what do you do? What do you play? And we're like, reggae. And he's like, oh my God, I love reggae. And then he looks straight at Kyle Skalinja and he goes, you, you are the Justin Timberlake of reggae, I bet. And Kyle, me and we were all like laughing. We're like, what? And he's like, and if you're not, you're going to be. You're going to be the Justin Timberlake of reggae. So what's funny is I just happened to be recording this whole interaction. And I recorded all that. So here is your bonus clip. One of the funniest things that's ever happened to me and Scalinja in our whole life. Uh, at the airport, Tony Orlando calling Scalinja the next Justin Timberlake of reggae. Wish we had talked about it on the podcast, but uh, next time, much love. Thanks for watching. Here you go. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The Justin Timberlake of reggae. I love, I love friends. Reggae.